All right, back on the Onkyo TXSR606. A bunch of parts have arrived. So I've got two sets of driver transistors for this unit, two sets of output transistors, some 0.22 ohm flame proof resistors, and some 0.22 ohm 5 watt emitter resistors. I always order spares, just in case. Anyhow, let's get this thing apart and get these parts installed. Try to get this thing up and running for the customer once again. So here is a list of the parts that are getting replaced in this unit. The two output transistors, the two base drive resistors, the two driver transistors, the idling adjust transistor, and the temperature compensating transistor. All of those are going to get replaced. I checked all the other parts as well as the dual emitter resistor. I checked the other parts like the 2.2 ohm right here perfectly fine but because we had damage to both output transistors and we had one of these definitely blown open that means that the driver transistors were stressed probably beyond belief so these are the old parts that have already been removed we'll go ahead and replace those that i circled on the schematic diagram and hopefully we'll get this thing back up and running once again all right, so getting ready to put these transistors back in the unit, the power output transistors. I want to go ahead and make sure that I can find a suitably matched set. I've only got two sets to choose from. So I'm just going to get the MK168 out here, and we'll go ahead and clip the leads on. We'll give this guy a test. This one has a beta gain of 62 and a forward voltage of 0.542 volts. So we'll make a note of that. 28 and 0.689 on that one. 103 and 0.558. 103 and 559. The two PMPs are almost identically matched. Well, I guess we'll go with a 62 and a 103. That's the closest pair that I've got. Next, we'll go ahead and test the drivers. We'll try to find a match set of those, if it's even possible, who knows. 162 and 567. Wow, 40 and 602. Holy moly. 72 and 599. And 95 and 606. Well, I think we'll go with the 40 and the 72. Those are like the closest we can get. Okay, the first transistor is mounted with an ample amount of heat sink compound because this one does track the bias based on the temperature of the heat sink. So let's go ahead and solder it in place. All right, very good. Next, we'll go ahead and mount the output transistors to the heat sink. Okay, so I have an adequate amount of heat sink compound. Not too terribly much because most of it's going to squish out. So we'll just take it and place it up against the heat sink. 
See if we can catch the old threads, and yes, we did. Perfect. Same thing on the other one. All right, very good. And I did tighten all the rest of the screws on every transistor on the heatsink. Most of them took between a quarter and a half a turn. So my commenters was correct. Go ahead and check those and make sure they're nice and tight. Next, we'll go ahead and mount the driver temperature regulator transistor and it just kind of sits in there. And I'm gonna flip this up so it might lose frame for a moment because I want to bend the leads over slightly so it doesn't fall out. Then we'll mount the one driver transistor on this side. I'm gonna bend the leads a little bit because it needs to be able to touch that transistor back there. So before I solder it in place, I'm gonna add a droplet of heat sink compound to it. And we'll pop a drop on the other side of it as well. And so what I've done is I bent the leads slightly back so that it will have more engagement in the rear so that it may make contact with that transistor back there. So that looks pretty close to the way the original transistors came out. Next, I'll go ahead and pop the board over. We'll solder those back up in place. All right, next we'll drop the 0.22 ohm base drive resistors in place. There's two of them. Now the originals claimed that they were quarter watt, but I ordered quarter watt replacements and they're much larger. So I'm going to have to stand these up to get them to fit in these little tiny holes because I don't want to bend the leads too terribly far. So we'll stand them up just like that. There we go, that should get the job done. Now I'll flip the board over and solder those up in place. Now all we're missing is the emitter resistor. We'll pop that one into place, solder it in. We'll bend the leads over on the output transistors that we haven't done yet. I wanted to wait until I got the 0.22 ohm base drive resistor, especially this one right here soldered in place because it connects right to the pad that the base connects to. So while we're down there doing the emitter resistor, we'll flip the pads over and get that soldered up in place as well. Okay, all the leads are soldered back up in place. Now I think it's time for a little acetone. We'll clean the flux off the board. I think I'm gonna have to scrape some of this flux off. It's been so hot in the past that I don't think acetone's gonna do a very good job at cleaning it. Well, that certainly looks a lot better than it did. And you can really tell how hot these transistors got based on the colors of the pads. They've gotten a much, much lighter green on the circuit side. Unbelievable. So I'm just gonna do a visual inspection of the rest of the board because I see some things down here that I just don't like. So here are the driver transistors on the surround back right channel. They don't look terribly good. 
Those are the ones I just replaced. And then that is the right channel, the main right channel output. I see rings around those. I definitely want to touch those up. This one is the center channel. They don't look too terribly bad. There's the left channel, definitely in need of repair. This is the surround left channel. Going to go ahead and touch those up as well. And then the surround back left channel as well. We'll hit those also. I feel much more confident that this thing's not going to come back anytime soon for another channel failure because of a bad connection on the driver transistor. Next, I thought I'd go ahead and measure this capacitor right here, the 47 at 50. So I've got my new blue ESR tester, power the unit up, short the leads together, zero it out. So the first one measures 0.78 ohms. That was not the bad channel. This is the bad channel. Two ohms. That's pretty bad. 6 ohms, definitely bad. 8.3, 8.4 ohms, bad. 1.4, not too terribly bad. 1.3, I'd like to see less than 1 ohm. That one's 0.97 ohms. So I think I'm probably just going to change all of them. Let's go ahead and test a new one. Should see less than about 1 ohm. And I see 0.3 ohms on that one. 29.3 on that one, perfectly fine. And 0 0.34, 0 0.3, 0 0.32. And finally, 0.32. So let's go ahead and pop those in. Okay, so all the parts are installed. I've checked those capacitors, replaced all of them, all seven of them, you can see them right there. Output transistors, base drive resistors, driver transistors, and both thermal regulating transistors have been replaced. Man, I'm telling you what, this thing is the gift that keeps on giving. So I'm gonna measure some of the ESRs on these capacitors up here on the driver board, 45 ohms. That one won't even move the needle. No response on that one either. Now this is not the bad channel. This is the bad channel, the surround right channel. 3.4, perfectly fine. 0.78, perfectly fine. One ohm, 0.98 ohms, 0.87 ohms. But yeah, that one's gonna have to get replaced. 45 ohms, that is not good. But they get better as we go down the line. 22 ohms, 11, 12, 10. Can we get less than 10 ohms? 6.4 ohms. So I think this thing has just been severely overheated. Let's check these other ones. Remember the uh, far left-hand channel didn't read anything. What's this one read? 4.6, 7.2. Are they gonna get progressively worse as we move left? 19, 37. Well, that one's not bad, 0.9. Then back to here, 0.8. Is it just this new ESR meter can't read them? Let's get the old meter out and see what it says. All right, here's the one you're used to seeing. Oh, it's bad. It's really bad. It's bad. That one's saying 50 ohms, 20, 25, about 18. Didn't this one say like six ohms? And that one's saying 10, so like I said, the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, well, I have ordered and received a bunch of capacitors. Two 20s at 25, some 47s at 50, some 10s at 50, and some 22s at 100. So that way I can change every capacitor on this board and know that this thing is going to have a semi clean bill of health. First thing, make a roadmap because every channel is exactly the same on these. So you only have to make a roadmap of one where the 47s are, the 220, the 10 at 50 and the 22 at 100. Okay, well here is my simple roadmap. It shows where the connector is on the bottom. And then I've laid out these three capacitors. They're all 47s at 50. This large one is a 220 at 50. This one right here is a 22 at 100. And these are all 10s at 50. So next I'm just going to go ahead and zip those capacitors off the board and we'll put some brand new ones on there. Well, there are all the old capacitors removed and replaced from the board. There are all the new capacitors. So let's just go ahead and get the blue ESR meter out and we'll check just a couple of them and make sure they all test okay. Okay, so these are the 47 microfarad caps, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.
0.08 and 0.08. This is the 220 at 50. Wow, it's a little higher, 0 0.26. This is the 22 at 50, 3.2, 3.3, and this is the 10 at 50. I assume they're all gonna be about the same, 1.4. Some of the original caps, I couldn't even measure the ESR was so high. We'll go ahead and put this unit back in and probably gonna go give it a good look over because this is the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and adjust the idling current for all of the channels. And this is the procedure to adjust the idling current. Now this is adjusted immediately after power on. And so for the front left, front right, and center, they want 2.5 millivolts. And for the surround left, surround right, surround back left, surround back right, they want 1.5 millivolts. Then they wanna let it run for four to six minutes and readjust these. Basically, if it's less than nine millivolts, adjust it up to nine if it's between nine and eleven leave it as is if it's over eleven adjust it to eleven so they're looking for twelve millivolts for the front left front right and center and then the same thing with the surround left surround right surround back left surround back right if it's below six adjust it up to six if it's between six and eight leave it as is and if it's over eight leave it at eight we'll go ahead and power it up i did make the special test jig they want with a couple of 100 ohm resistors and then here are the test points where to connect it with each channel and what controls to adjust depending on whether it's the surround back left, the front right, surround back right, and so forth and so on. So here is the little test fixture that I manufactured and it's just a, a two pin plug right here. Right in here are the 100 ohm resistors they wanted me to add. Then I just went ahead and put a piece of tape about every six inches and I did go ahead and add a couple of banana plugs so I can just plug it directly into my multimeter and do those tests. Okay, so I have the test fixture connected to the surround back left channel. Just to verify that the integrity on everything is good, if I put it to ohms, I should get about 200 ohms, and I get 198.6, that is close enough. So we'll put it back in the DC millivolt range, and I'm just gonna power on the unit. And remember, I want to see about 1.5 millivolts. So here we go, power on, and I'm gonna adjust this up to 1.5 then power the unit off, go to the next channel. We'll do the exact same thing here. Adjust it to 1.5, power the unit off. Now we're on the left channel, we wanna see 2.5 millivolts. Close enough. This is the center channel. Once again, we want to see 2.5. Close enough. This one's going to be the right channel. Once again, we want to see 2.5. There we go. This is the channel that was repaired. And unfortunately, the lowest I can go on that one is 2.5. We'll see what it does after it warms up. And finally, the surround back right channel. 1.5 millivolts. I'm slightly concerned about the 2.5 that we're getting on the channel that was repaired. It's still pretty doggone close. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing warm up. They want it to warm up between four and six minutes. So we'll let it warm up and see where it lands at that point. Okay, so it's been running for about eight minutes right now and all the channels are way under what they asked they should be. So they want me to adjust this up to six millivolts after four to six minutes. It's been running for almost nine minutes now. So let's go ahead and dial it up to six. And the channel we just worked on, it's still at three. We'll take it up to six. Now they want these taken up to nine because it's the main channels. Close enough.
all the channels are dialed in. So next, we just need to go ahead and put everything else back in here and get it ready to go. I don't have any of the microprocessor, the audio processing, anything connected right now, just the preamp and the power amplifier. And let me show you what I've done to be able to adjust these things without having everything mounted. I didn't want to put everything in there just in case there was a problem and I had to pull it back apart. So let me show you what I did to get around that situation. So this is the standby power supply board. And these terminals right here are the main power power relay. This is the input side, the coil side, and then this is the contact side. I just went ahead and added a jumper across the contacts. So anytime I apply power to this unit, it's going to turn on without the help of the microprocessor, no system control, no protection, no anything like that. It's just going to power up anytime I give it AC power. And I have the AC voltage set to 125 volts AC right now, and that's how I performed my tests and adjustments. Well, once again, the gift that keeps on giving. I thought I would check some of these capacitors on the little standby board right here. It has a couple of regulators, a bridge rectifier. I've got my lead zeroed out. This is a 47 microfarad capacitor. I should see about a half an ohm maximum. And I've got 2.7 ohms. That one's bad. This is a 10 at 50. I expect to see maybe four or five ohms. Nine. This one is a 470 microfarad capacitor. So I want to see a half an ohm or less on that guy. That one's good, 0.3 ohms. This one is another 470, once again, half an ohm. Eh, right at 0.5 ohms. So those aren't terribly bad, but for reference, I've got a brand new 470 microfarad capacitor right here, and I read 0.14 ohms on it. So I'm probably just gonna go ahead and change those 470s out. There's a couple more here. We'll go ahead and check this one. What value is that? 220 at 25. I gotta flip the board up to get to the bottom of that one. So for a 220, I'd expect to see maybe a half an ohm at the most, 2.9 ohms. That one is definitely bad. We're gonna change that one out and probably change those 470s out just to be safe. All right, it is all back together. I do have speakers connected, but only to the surround right channel. That was the channel that was blown. So I do have a DVD connected to it through the HDMI input. I have my monitor connected on the HDMI output. The video is absolutely perfect. So let's turn up the audio. So that channel that was blown sounds absolutely perfect right now. It's working great. So let me go ahead and get some other audio into it from my MP3 player through the main speakers. I'll we'll make sure that those sound okay as well. Well, there are all the parts that got replaced. It's up and running. All back together, man, what a bunch of capacitors. I went ahead and I did change those capacitors on that power supply board. Down there, I did test all the capacitors on the HDMI board. They all tested absolutely perfect. Every capacitor on that preamp board got changed. All those capacitors down there got replaced. Plus this one channel right here got rebuilt. It's all ready to go. It sounds great. Anyhow, there it is. I hope you enjoyed the repair on the Onkyo TXSR606. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, once again, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.